How we doing folks? Tutorial Tim here and today I'm going to show you, uh, I'm just going to give you a basic understanding of constraints and uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. So uh, let's get started. So I got this file. You can also duplicate it and then also replicate these, um, these exercises I'll go through <clears throat> as I show you constraints. So uh, without any further ado, I got this square here, this shape I'll call my element, which is a current selection. Um, and anyways, I got it in this frame. And uh, by default, right now with this Figma file, the constraints are set to top and right, but without any constraints, if I move this, if I select this frame and start moving it around, it's, uh, it's staying in its position. So if I move that, grab my frame, you know, this frame, it's, it's staying in its like fixed position or whatever you want to call it. But what if I wanted to stick to the top and left of this frame? Uh, in order to do that, I would have to select my element and then select the left and top, top and left, vice versa. And um, you'll notice that once I select the parent frame, I could uh, do shift return to select my parent frame and then start moving it around. You notice it'll stay in a fixed position. Also, uh, we can remove these constraints and then check this box and then we can fix this position when scrolling. So with that, I mean, I'm gonna, do, actually I'm gonna move these up and then what I'm gonna do is select this frame, hold down command to, to extend the canvas. And then I'm gonna go to, so you can see this effect. I'm gonna, I clicked on this and then I checked this box. And then if you go to preview, you hit that play button, which is uh, present, not preview. My apologies. Um, this uh, presentation mode will appear, right? So when you're scrolling, it'll stay in a fixed position. So you kind of understand what that means as you scroll through the rest of the canvas. Um, hope that makes sense. Um, it probably wasn't a good example, but the majority of this is just to go over constraints. Um, so we have that fixed position when scrolling. So right now we basically get this uh, box to scale by default when moving this canvas around. You notice that it'll, it'll scale, so it'll like squish. Um, so I'm gonna hold down command, resize that, delete that, and then I'm gonna teach you how to set constraints more in depth now. So I'm gonna grab four of these squares, gonna place one on the top, gonna place one on the right, and then I'm gonna place this one on the bottom left and then on the bottom right. Make that gray a little darker. All right, so now we have all these set to top and left which we don't want because, well, that's one example, but it just wouldn't look right when scaling because they're all gonna stay in the same position when I scale this frame out. It's all just gonna stay because it's set to the top and left. So now, um, what if I want each square to move in respect, in regards to like the position it's in? So it's closest to each corner, right? So we want it to stick to that corner in that case. So if we wanna do that, we just change uh, the left to the right so now it's snapping. We get that little indicator there with that little dotted line on the top and right. And then for this one, as opposed to top and left, we're gonna do bottom and right. And also when, if you wanna make it constrained to both sides, you just hold down shift. And if you want it to uh, center, you could select within this little light dotted line square, but we're gonna set this to right and bottom. Now we have that set, and then we're gonna set this to left and bottom as opposed to top and left. Now you'll see those constraints change, and then this is top and left as intended. So now you'll notice, if I move this to the right, the elements will move to the right. And then if I move this to the bottom, only these elements will move to the bottom. If I move this to the left, only these elements will move to the left. And I move this elements to the on the top, they only move in relation to the top. So that is that. And what if we wanted to make a more fluid approach? How do, how do we make something look fluid? So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna delete these two and use this as an example. I'm gonna just horizontally center these bad boys and then stretch these out. I'm gonna have two different types of positioning here. I'm gonna have fixed positioning and then that will s that will stay centered, so it won't move when I stretch it. And then I'm gonna have this move and stick to the bottom. So I'm gonna shift click on the left, so it's set to left and right. 
so it will have to stretch so it'll be more of a fluid motion so now when I stretch my canvas you'll notice the difference between the two properties that we applied um, and um, so you'll notice one is a more fluid type of constraint which comes into play when designing for like responsive sites if you're make if things are fluid in your column layout and then also you have your centered constraint as well and um, one more constraint I want to show you I believe I've covered almost all of them um, there are quite a few um, I'm gonna just delete that notice that I don't have this positioning pro set to center vertically I only have it sent to center horizontally so if I wanted to center horizontally a good representation of this would be if I hold down option V I'll center this vertically and then not only that I'll apply a center vertical constraint for the top and bottom so whenever this canvas moves this will now stay perfectly center whether I move the height it'll stay centered or and when I change the width as well it will stay centered and uh, that's all I have for understanding the basics of constraints folks feel free to practice these constraints in this figma file by duplicating it the links in the description and if you found this helpful please leave a like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one